morning students my name is Neerti Seth and thanks for watching Edipedia word videos my topic for the presentation is the sixth section of the chapter movement and locomotion in this section of presentation we'll be studying about your axial skeleton okay so let's move towards our topic that is your axial skeleton but before that I would like to discuss about the key functions of the human skeletal system first is support our bones they provide the rigidity we need to function and second is the protection the rigidity of our bones allows them to protect our internal organs from damage for example the rib cage and the skull and third is the movement can you imagine movement without bones and muscles no so without the strength of our bones we would not be able to move our muscles that are anchored to our bones fourth key function of the human skeletal system is storage our bones they are the storehouse for fat and certain essential minerals and then last function of human skeletal system is blood cell formation in this most of our blood components they are made in bones now as I have told you that the skeletal system of human is divided into two categories or two divisions and they are axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton and the study of a skeletal system is known as scatology. Axial skeleton includes a skull, vertebral column, ribs and a sternum. In this section of presentation, we will be studying only about the skull, vertebral column, ribs and a sternum. And in next section of the presentation, we will be studying about the appendicular skeleton. That includes girdles, pectoral, pectoral girdle, pelvic girdle, limb bones that are of two types forelimbs and hind limbs so human skeleton total number of bones that are found in fetus they are 306 in number whereas in adults they are 206 in adults because as the age progresses bones some of the bones they get fused and the number gets reduced to 206 but in children they are 213 bones okay human axial skeleton as I have told you that in my this section of the presentation will be studying only about the human axial skeleton axial skeleton consists of a skull okay ribs and a sternum and your vertebral column so first we'll study about the skull a skull includes 29 bones whereas vertebral column includes 26 bones ribs they are 24 in number and sternum is 1 in number see from here to here this is a sternum bone and this is a rib cage which consists of 24 bones okay this is the human skeleton okay human skull will study first human skull as I have told you that it consists only of 29 bones so it again consists of uh, cranium bones which are 8 in number your facial bones that are 14 in number auditory or the ear ocycles which are 6 in number and your tongue bone or it is also known as hoid bone which is 1 in number so total 29 bones are found in a skull cranium is your brain box and it consists of eight bones one occipital bone one frontal bone two parietal bone two temporal bone one sphenoid bone and one ethmoid bone then cranial bones they are joined together by permanent joints which we call it as sutures sutures they are immovable joints they cannot be moved by your will or without your will okay 
as I have told you that there are eight bones see these are the eight bones so between parietal and frontal there is a suture which we call it as coronal suture okay and between parietal and temporal bone there is a lamboidal suture cranium has a distinguishing feature which we call it as foramen of magnum this is foramen of magnum okay this is foramen of magnum from where your vertebral column emerges out okay that is your spinal cord emerges out then foramen of magnum it is surrounded by two exo occipital one supra occipital one basio occipital bones okay and it is the largest foramen of body because spinal cord comes out through this foramen please note that i have taught you that there are eight bones in the cranium okay so in that eight bones there is one bone which we call it as sphenoid bone in sphenoid bone there is a depression okay which we call it as cella turcica cell in which pituitary gland is situated in okay or which in which pituitary gland is lodged in okay so cranium bones we have already studied because a skull consists of cranium facial bone hyoid bone and ear bone cranium we have already studied now comes facial bones it consists of 14 bones two nasal bones two inferior nasal concave one vomer two lacrimal two zygomatic two palatine and two maxilla and one mandible okay zygomatic bones they are known as cheek bones and maxilla they are your upper jaw bones mandible is your lower jaw bone and it is the hardest and the largest bone of face now comes ear bones ear bones is another category of your skull and it consists of three bones malus incus and stapes m i s and they these bones they are present in pairs so that's why they are six small bones because three in each ear okay i will be explaining you about the joints in my next section of the presentation but for the time being just know that joint between malus and incus is known as hinge joint joint between incus and stapes is known as ball and socket joint and stapes is the smallest bone of the human body okay this stapes which is found in our human ear human internal ear uh, so this is the smallest bone of the human body now third category of human skull is hyoid hyoid is also known as your tongue bone it is located on the floor of your buccal cavity okay and it consists of body greater cornu and lesser cornu this is the body of our, our tongue uh, this is lesser cornu and this is the greater cornu it is the only bone which which is not articulate to any bone that means it it is the only bone which is not attached to any other uh, bone through which uh, movement or anything can take place okay it supports our tongue this hyoid bone it supports our tongue and it provides insertion to some tongue muscles also okay now the second category of the axial skeleton is vertebral column see we have studied skull in there therein we studied in skull we studied your hyoid bone your uh, ear ossicles okay and your facial bones and your cranium bones now we'll study about the human vertebral column which is the second category of the human axial skeleton it is also known as backbone or spinal bone okay 
and it is made up of 33 vertebrates. See, from here to here, these are the 33 vertebrae. Vertebrates are the building blocks of your human vertebral column. Okay? So, 33 vertebrates, they fuse together and form net total of 26 vertebrates as the age progresses. See, uh, this is the curvature of our uh, spinal cord, which is S in shape. Okay, this is the cervical curvature. Okay, from here to here, this is known as thoracic curvature. From here to here, lumbar curvature. And from here to here, sacral curvature. And this to this, this is known as coccyx bone. That is your tailbone. Okay, so cervical curvature, it is directed forward. And this lumbar curvature, it is also directed forward. But the thoracic curvature, it is uh, uh, directed backward. Okay. And same is the case with the sacral also. So, human vertebral column is about 40, 70 centimeter long and it is curved like S. There are four curvatures in vertebral column. As I have told you, cervical and lumbar, they are directed forward forward but thoracic and sacral they are directed inward so this curvature they help in the erect posture and the bipedal locomotion vertebral column is differentiated into five regions cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and caudal or tailbone okay from here to here they are cervical vertebrae from here to here thoracic vertebrae from lumbar from here to here lumbar vertebrae, from here to here sacral vertebrae and from here to here they are coccyx vertebrae. Vertebral for, uh, formula for men is 26 in adults but 33 in children. Okay. S uh, seven cervical vertebrae are found that's why C7 is written. Thoracic vertebrae they are 12 in number. And five vertebrae are found in lumbar, so L5. And five vertebrae are found in sacral region, that's why S15. And then comes caudal vertebrae, they are four in number, that is your tailbone, it is also four in number. So that's why caudal uh, CD4. Vertebral formula for rabbit is 46, okay. This is the vertebral formula for the rabbit. C7, that means cervical are 7 in number, thoracic are 12 in number, lumbar are 7 in number, and uh, sacral they are 4 in number, and caudal is 16 in number for rabbits. Mammals, they are characterized by the presence of 7 cervical vertebrae. Human, rat, rabbit, and giraffe, they all have 7 cervical vertebrae. Exceptions are also there, which have six vertebrae, six uh, cervical vertebrae, and uh, six, eight, and nine vertebrae uh, cervical. Okay, as uh, sea cow, uh, they have six cervical vertebrae. Ant bear, they have eight cervical vertebrae, and uh, this bradypus, they have nine cervical vertebrae. First cervical vertebrae is ring-like and hold the skull so that's the reason it is called as atlas first vertebrae is known as atlas it is also known as yes bone okay second cervical vertebrae is known as axis the first uh, cervical vertebrae is known as atlas but second is known as axis and it is also known as no bone okay and please note that axis is absent in frogs. And the joint between atlas and axis bone is ball and socket joint. I will be explaining you about the joints in my next section of the presentation in detail. Now thoracic vertebrae, they are 12 in number and they are differentiated in anterior and posterior. Okay. Ribs, they are attached to the thoracic vertebrae. We'll be studying uh, about the ribs in the next, uh, after this uh, human vertebral column, okay? So, 
four are the caudal bones they are joined to form coccyx okay they are joined to form coccyx these are the coccyx bones so okay and it is considered as vestigial in humans coccyx is homologous to euro style of frog rattle of rattlesnakes this is the rib cage okay uh, which is attached to, to the thoracic vertebrae okay so this is the first thoracic vertebrae through which first rib is attached to and this is the sternum from here to here this is a sternum okay and um, from first to six uh, they are known as true ribs okay from seven to uh, tenth they are known as your false ribs and eleventh and twelfth they are known as floating ribs okay so in humans ribs are 12 pairs that's why they are 24 in number first seven pairs are known as true ribs and next three pairs are known as false ribs and last two pairs they are known as floating ribs okay now uh, floating ribs what is what is the function of the floating ribs because uh, the function of the floating rib is to protect kidneys okay and um, you uncinate process is found in the avian ribs that is in the uh, ribs of the birds this process provide attachment surface for the flight muscles cervical ribs are not ribs uh, they these are backwardly directed uh, process in cervical vertebrae of birds now comes the fourth category of the human axial skeleton and that is your sternum that is also known as your breast bone it supports thorax on the ventral side and it is around 15 centimeter long and it consists of three parts uppermost is your manubrium this one is your manubrium okay middle body is known as your meso sternum and the lower most is known as this one this is your xiphus sternum which is consist of saphoid cartilage so this was all about the human axial skeleton i have already taught you in detail in my previous section of the presentation uh, it was just the overview or the summarizing manual okay and in my next section of the presentation we'll be studying about the human appendicular skeleton so till then stay tuned and keep watching Wikipedia word videos